This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to the Voice for Fitness Professionals podcast, where I share programming, marketing, and promotion strategies that are easy, enjoyable, even fun, so you can create a business and a life you love. And I'm here going down memory lane today, but not all by myself. My guest with me is going to do this with me as we recall a very fun and fabulously educational and insightful conference I was at last weekend in San Francisco. Tony Berlant is a consultant, published researcher, and author, coach, and a veteran of the health and fitness industry with more than 20 years of leadership experience. And you're going to be blown away when I mention some of the places he's worked. He earned his bachelor's of arts degree from University of California, LA in psychology and his master of science degree in exercise and movement science, focusing on exercise and sports psychology. So this is why I did not know it until right now. He and I get along so well. (laughs) So many of you know, that's my background as well. He served as a certified personal trainer, a multi-club regional fitness manager, and a corporate level director for some of the most well-known companies in the industry. And here I go listing them. So listen to this. Los Angeles-based health and fitness club, companies of the sports club company, Spectrum Clubs, Yoga Fit, uh, Training Systems Worldwide, Mad Dog Athletic, a director of education for the Sports Club LA. He's been education coordinator for Yoga Works Inc. And while employed with Yoga Fit, he managed general operations overseeing retail and wholesale sales, warehouse operations, and more. For almost six years, Tony served as director of programs for Mad Dog Athletics, the creator of Spinning, indoor cycling program, and owner of Peak Pilates, Resistible, and Cross Core. So if you wonder if he's qualified to be here, I think you have your answer. Tony is currently acting as the director of education and programs for the Medical Fitness Education Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to developing and delivering education and practical application for fitness professionals and other allied healthcare practitioners in the areas of chronic disease and other medical conditions. He consults for the organization, assists in the production of conferences called the Medical Fitness Tour and is involved in all areas of operations. And Tony, I am so happy to have you here. Ah, well, thank you very much. I I feel like I should retire now after that. <laughs> I know. It's hard to listen to that. I know it is. I know. But, you know, I needed to read all that because that just points so much to your credibility and the depth of experience that you've had. You know, and I I like those stories that, you know, yes, you know, you're in, you've directed and managed, but I also like it when you started out, you know, as a trainer because you get it, you know, while you're putting on conferences, picking the educational pieces of them, you know, because you have had your butt in the seat, right? You know what they need and want. Yeah, I actually, I uh, before I got into the industry itself, I was in academics and um, I'd actually completed a couple years in a doctoral program for sport and exercise psychology, passed my doctoral comp exams and then decided that... Um, I couldn't see myself getting up there and teaching in front of other students when I didn't have any practical experience within the fitness industry or within exercise or coaching. So from there, I decided to withdraw from the program. And uh, six months later, you know, I found myself inside of a health club on a Sunday morning, folding towels and (laughs) picking up sweaty newspapers off the floor near the cardio decks and, you know, just starting at the bottom and, um, and learning a, a whole new trade and a new pathway. So yeah, I started, uh, at the, at the bottom and kind of climbed my way up and then spread out a little bit just to get a, a good perspective of the entire industry. That is so good. So rich. And as somebody who 
who has been in the industry for 34 years doing all that, but starting again at 49, I folded towels not very long ago, (laughs) my friend. So we should probably have a glass of Perrier (laughs) together at some point. (laughs) Love that. Okay. So all of that under your belt, how did your career with the Medical Fitness Education Foundation begin? Yeah, well, you mentioned uh, that I had worked with Mad Dog Athletics, and um, I believe while I was in uh, a booth at one of the industry trade shows, whether it was URSA or IDEA, uh, Lisa had come by, and um, she I think she just caught me by accident. I know she wasn't looking for me, but we started chatting. And she was already um, in touch with uh, Kevin Steele, who was one of uh, the presenters at the San Francisco uh, Medical Fitness Tour that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And uh, just through her, uh, you know, uh, dogged approach, um, she m- got herself uh, involved with Mad Dog Athletics. And, and I know Kevin's been a big supporter as well. So I was sort of introduced through it because she uh, met Kevin and they talked and then Mad Dog was going to get involved. And I should probably back up and just say that Lisa Doherty is the founder of the Medical Fitness Education Foundation as well as the Medical Fitness Network. And uh, so she um, got herself uh, involved with Mad Dog. And for some reason, I guess at Mad Dog, we just, um, we weren't able to get ourselves together and we really didn't develop a relationship um, with Lisa beyond. And that was uh, obviously just a, sort of a mistake on our part and our leadership, but I was able to stay in touch with her. And when I left Mad Dog, um, I was given an opportunity to join her advisory board for the medical fitness network. And so from there, I just was doing like, you know, about five hours, uh, I don't know, five hours a month or something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more just having conversations with her and, uh, maybe doing a little bit of uh, work, but from there, it's just sort of grown into, uh, five hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours. You know, the projects are growing, the, the, uh, the amount of interest is growing. And so, uh, yeah, I started on her advisory board and then for the medical fitness network. And then I'm sure you'll ask me this a little bit later, but when the MedFit education foundation was started, uh, just the sort of fourth quarter of last year, uh, I got even more involved, um, as a, uh, director of the education and programs division of that. What a story. And, I'm listening to that thinking, oh, yeah, I met Kevin, and then I think I was introduced to Lisa in the same way. It is, yeah. if you're listening, trainers, I mean, this is, this is how it happens. You know, it's really being interested, I think, in somebody else and what somebody else is doing and wondering how could I help them and just staying in touch and, and in contact, it's, it's really getting to know people and, and caring about what their mission is, which brings me to, you know, in, in the introduction of, you know, your bio and what you're doing, I, I did say it, but just for listeners, what mm-hmm. is, you know, if I can shorten it to MedFit, what's, what's the mission Sure. Well, um, you know, going back to uh, when I got involved at the time, uh, there was just this thing called the MedFit Network or Medical Fitness Network. And what that was and still is, is a registry of personal trainers and other allied health professionals who specialize in working with folks who have uh, been diagnosed with chronic disease or have some other medical conditions or even you know, the one medical condition that people are often happy to get in terms of prenatal, you know, pre-postnatal, <laughs> um, that's a medical condition, but it's one that is often uh, received well, you know, rather than uh, most medical conditions and chronic diseases True. Are being received well. <laughs> but um, that was the reason I, I got involved because I have a lot of friends who are trainers and a lot of uh, those trainers are very well educated and um, it's hard to find them if if there isn't really a registry that kind of calls them out. So in addition to that uh, mission in terms of connecting these 
medical organizations, if you will, like the American Diabetes Association, American Heart Association, and and other um, organizations that hospitals and doctors often refer to, is connecting these individuals who are being diagnosed with a practitioner who could safely and effectively uh, work with them. So that mission of the Medical Fitness Network was the reason that I got involved because I just thought that's a great uh, that's a great mission, and of course you know, I love Lisa. She's very passionate about it, and she's been doing it, uh, you know, pouring all of her heart and soul and time into it. And I admired that, and I thought, you know, here's my opportunity to maybe uh, put some effort and time into an organization that isn't uh, solely. I guess, uh, motivated to drive revenue for um, a corporation or for shareholders. And uh, that's not a comment on all of my previous employers, but the difference between a for-profit and non-profit, um, you know, there's uh, obviously an obvious difference there. And so for me, I, I thought, well, here's my chance to be more in the non-profit world and, and do things, you know, uh, pro bono, if you will, uh, for a while and uh, just help with that mission. And um, I'll keep talking because what we found is that in the Medical Fitness Network, while that was a great mission to have these people listed on a registry, the amount of education or current education that was built for working with populations that have chronic disease like cancer, heart disease, or Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, for example, um, that education is really not out there. And so that is where Lisa decided, you know, let's build a, uh, a foundation with its own mission of developing and delivering education uh, for these fitness professionals in these areas so that when they actually do come to the registry, they really do have the most current education under their belt to go along with all of their years of experience. So, the MedFit Network began first, and then the foundation was kind of born out of that to answer uh, the call for current education in all of these different populations. So uh, that seemed like a natural transition for me to get into the Medical Fitness Education Foundation, and since I've got a lot of background in the education you know, development side of things. So good, so good, and you're using the word, you know, that's how it was born, and actually that was my next question, because you, <laughs> you guys have birthed a lot of babies together, right? I mean, right now, things are happening, so there's yeah. MedFit TV happening, you know, you've got webinars, and now those are going to be weekly, if I was listening correctly, um, mm. and you have the tour, so you're actually taking it out on the road to make it even easier for trainers who live somewhere else in the country other than where you are to find it and and to be there in person, which I think is sometimes so different and so important. So we're, we're all so connected online and digitally that we know that makes access wherever you are. So if you are in North Dakota, I'm not picking on you. I could pick on Iowa because I'm mm -hmm. from there. But, you know, we know we can get education and, and access it so much easier now. But, you know, it's also so different, too, when you're live at an event, you know, mixing and mingling and talking to people. And the energy is different. So, Talk about the tour. When was it born? Sure. Sure. So the tour is um, an entity of the foundation. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of different projects going on with the foundation. And, um, yeah, if, uh, if anyone out there hasn't met Lisa Doherty, I encourage you to do so. Uh, it's very inspiring individual. She'll make you want to follow your own passions just based on how much uh, passion she has for her own projects. And she is very, very smart and has come up with a lot of different ideas and avenues to kind of grow this space, this medical fitness space. So um, we do webinars, as you mentioned. Uh, we've been doing them t every two weeks. And uh, in 2019, we're going to do those uh, weekly. Uh, that's one of our uh, projects. But the tour is another project. And as you said, you know, getting together live, there's, you really can't um, 
you really can't beat that. You probably saw a lot of conversations happening between people who had just met. Um, this was our third tour stop in San Francisco, and I can tell you, even just from the first two, one was in Phoenix and one was in New Jersey, um, a lot of projects have been, uh, I guess, and I'll use the word again, born out of those um, tour stops because different professionals, different uh, product builders, uh, different educators are meeting and networking and coming together with their ideas uh, on how to tackle a certain area of the medical fitness space. And so uh, there's really nothing like coming to a live tour talking with these speakers. And I should point out while I have a moment here is, you know, the foundation is of course a, a nonprofit and the tours themselves are really the, the speakers that speak on the tours. They um, do that on their own. They volunteer to do that. We have speakers that travel across the country to give a presentation. Nobody's paying those folks uh, from the foundation here. And oftentimes, uh, they are uh, representing other sponsor companies who are wanting to get involved. So, you know, we really got to give them credit for the amount of effort and time they put in uh, for the project as well. I uh, just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. So, yeah, the first uh, the first event was earlier this year. And, um, you know, we as a team, the three of us, we didn't really have, well, we had no experience putting together uh, an event uh, as a team. Um, I know I had uh, a good deal of experience with events in my previous um, jobs. We used to do a, a monthly conference at uh, Yoga Fit, and uh, we did about so we did about ten or twelve of those a year. And while at Mad Dog, we had uh, you know one giant conference every year in June, and uh, and of course I was responsible for organizing trainings every week all over the country, or or you know, following a team, making sure that would happen. So uh, the operational logistics of it were um, not difficult to uh, comprehend and do, but really the coming up with the program and really trying to figure out who's going to be the audience and who's going to want to come here, that was really sort of the, the more challenging part. And, and Lisa, again, uh, just really kind of understands this area and, uh, has put together some really great programs with sessions and and different uh, breakout sessions for lunch and so forth. So yeah, it's uh, we have other projects, but uh, right now the tour is so we just got back, so it's fresh on my mind. <laughs> okay, so you were in Phoenix, New Jersey. We just did San Francisco. I'm thinking Chicago is coming up. What else is? Am I missing anything? No, that's uh, correct. We're in Chicago. Uh, that's the last tour stop that we have for this year. It's a co-located conference with Club Industry. So oh, yeah. we're really proud of that because uh, to be affiliated with um, a big industry uh, organization, big trade um, organization, and a very well-attended show is a, a really nice stamp of approval for us. And so our conference in Chicago will coincide with their conference, and our sessions will occur on Thursday and Friday of uh, the Club Industry Conference. That's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, and then we roll into next year, 2019, with uh, a goal to do – the same or more in terms of the numbers of uh, conferences. And we get better every time with the feedback that we get from the attendees and others about how to go about scheduling it and laying it out. Uh, we've been doing three days. Uh, Friday comes with a bunch of pre-conference workshops, and then Saturday and Sunday are the sessions themselves. And we might tweak that schedule just to see if we can capture – uh, a different audience, maybe a few more people along the way. Uh, so those are the kinds of things we're looking at as we um, look towards next year. Great. Yeah. You know, it's such a, you know, it's like planning any party. Yeah. It's hard to please yeah. all the people all the time. Right. But, you know, <laughs> I think the one of the things that I was really so impressed with was the compression of so much into so little time. So the people who needed to, you know, come in, get it and, and get out and if need be, be back at work Monday morning could. Um, so, you know, I really enjoyed 
the fact that you know they were full days for sure, but yeah. that makes it more possible for people to attend in some cases. So I love that. Yeah, the model is a single track, uh, so there's no mm-hmm. competing tracks, and that's really helpful. So, you know, we all have gone to conferences, and we look at the giant menu of sessions, uh, and yeah. we're so excited about all things. We go, there's five things I want to take just in the same hour. So you take one, and you think about the four you're missing, and you just, it, it, you know, it doesn't feel great the entire conference. You feel like you missed more than you took. Well, these uh, medical fitness tours are single track, so all those speakers, you're going to get to see all of them, and it's a nice sort of intimate, um, although there's you know 80 to 100 people in the room, but it's still intimate, and uh, the speakers are very approachable uh, throughout the day, and we'll take questions at the end of the sessions, and it, you know, it just allows everybody to kind of really focus in on the one presentation at hand, and then... The weekend itself, you can kind of see the threads of similarity across all the different um, sessions pulling it together. And so that's something that uh, I think is also good because uh, you you can go to another conference and you'll be in a lecture here and a workout there and you'll be talking about high-level performance here and then you'll talk about Mm post-rehab there and it's quite disjointed. Mm -hmm. Um, But these speakers... You know, they, they see what's on the schedule with them and they kind of cross-refer to each other. Uh, so if you have something on uh, osteoporosis and then there might be another presentation the next day on osteoarthritis, the speakers know that and they kind of speak to each other. It's just really, it's just a nice flowing model, I think. I totally agree. Yeah, and, and with everything you just said, you know, it's not so disjointed and what I want to do too is compliment you or commend you because, you know, there wasn't multi-tracks, which somebody listening might be thinking, oh, you know, that's just it. We're in one room the whole time. And yet, you know, I think choices, making choices, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we all know this for our customers, for our clients that, you know, if they're faced with too many choices, they won't make any. Right. Mm -hmm. And, And I think sometimes that happens to us, too. We just get stuck with, okay, we've circled four things I want to go to at this hour. I don't know how to choose. But I will say that what you did in selection, and this is coming down to you, and I'm sure Lisa had a voice in this as well, but I wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else. These speakers were an 11 on a 1 through 10 scale. Every yeah. single one of them hit it out of the park. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't gray. It was just they were top notch. Yeah, well, uh, a couple things there. First, on your mention of choice, and um, you'll appreciate this as well a lot, but given your psych background and my own, you know, one of the key concepts in motivational theory is choice. And without any choice, that's hardly motivating. But as you're, you're right, sometimes too many choices is also not optimally motivating. So while we do have uh, a single track, uh, a person doesn't have to register for everything. They could just take one day or the other day if they didn't want to come to all of them. Or you could come to one session and take a break and then go see another session. So it's really kind of optimally motivating um, and focusing on the subjects. And it gives you an opportunity to to really get to know who's there. And you talked about who's there in terms of the speakers. And yeah, this last one was um, terrific. And I, you know, I'm going to slip it in and give Lisa most of the credit because she really is the one that seeks out the, the speakers that she'd like to see. And then we do talk a little bit about the kinds of topics. Um, but yeah, she's really, uh, really the brains behind it all. But we had some great speakers. We opened the conference um, with Phil Kaplan, and yeah. Phil is is uh, just somebody. If you've been in the industry for a long time, you know his name from the early days. Kind of one of those pioneers of the personal training industry that kind of turned it into a business. Uh, and if he wasn't responsible for turning it into a business itself, he was responsible for elevating it uh, to a, a level in which you uh, 
understood that you should now be paid for your value. And that was the, um, you know, that was really his uh, impact in the early days. But now he is coming back and he's really jumping into that area. I love that he referenced this uh, Blue Ocean Strategy book because uh, I just have that great image of, of this red ocean in terms of where the sharks are and they're all kind of like fighting over this space, which could be considered the current personal training uh, status right now where, you know, people are just trying to do personal training differently all the time. But the blue ocean where there are no sharks, this is his comment, is this space between medicine and fitness. And so if you're interested in working with the growing population, which arguably is now the norm in terms of people who have at least one kind of chronic uh, condition, whether it be, uh, you know, an injury uh, uh, occurring or something even more serious than that, like a disease, uh, there are not a lot of trainers that have that kind of education, background, um, knowledge, skills, abilities to work with those individuals. And there's really not a great business model uh, out there that people are known uh, or that people know. So he's like, once again, sort of elevating the level of the trainer, this time now the medical fitness trainer, uh, and saying, you know, there's a, there's a business to be had here, but while also helping people. And uh, I think that's obviously the undercurrent is uh, all of this is, is designed to help people um, in, get with quality of life increased or uh, actually reverse certain conditions that they have or prevent possible conditions in the future. So Phil was a great speaker, and uh, I don't know if you wanted me to kind of go down. I'll let you kind of. Yeah, kinda let's do it. this. Yeah. Let's go in a laser-like way so we can yeah. hit each one of these because we're, we're really going to go long here, and I know. Oh, wow. You know, That's me. Um, <laughs> we could talk all day, you and I, I think. So I'm going to pull a couple nuggets that I got yeah. from Phil and totally on on count with everything you said. I've been in the industry for 34 years and Phil was one of the early speakers, you know, when yeah. I first emerged. And in fact, I think he may have come on the scene a couple of years later, but he's been presenting ever since. And I'll have to tell you that I thought, oh, Really? I've heard him like how many times? And then I right. sat in there and I was like, no, <laughs> this is fresh. I mean, he's right. Exactly. It's, it's new and fresh. And what I loved that he said, so if you're listening, he really emphasized on, yes, this space, but he also came back and said, you know, if you want to stand out, you have to find your voice and be contrarian. Stand up for what you believe in. You don't want to blend in. You want to, you know, be anything but just a personal trainer. So right. to do that, you're going to break rules. You're going to do things differently than someone else is doing them, and don't be afraid to do that because that will be your distinction. I think that was the biggest takeaway. So let's let's talk next. Like. Andrea yeah. Leonard was there, and for those of you that don't know Andrea, she is founder and president of the Cancer Exercise Training Institute, and every one of us right now here can probably list five people we know or love who's been effect, affected, yeah. if not ourselves. Um, powerful, powerful speaker. You know, she has so much energy, and, and many fitness professionals do, but Lots of takeaways from her. What would be yours, Tony? Yeah, well, I think, you know, uh, there is often a fear that uh, the trainers have where they couldn't really work with someone if they hadn't had the experience themselves. We, we know fitness professionals will often never uh, make recommendations about different foods or different programs or things like that, unless they've tried it themselves. Right. I mean, that's often like, yep. that's often the thing that we hold very highly of a, a trainer. But when you're talking about working with populations that you have not had the experience um, you often can be uh, afraid to do that. Like men ha uh, working with women who are pregnant, there's many people who are afraid to do that because they just think they can't understand it. Which, and I think what Andrea kind of points out is 
that it's really about the education and the more education you had in this particular area, the less fears you would have with working people. And that opens the door for you to um, be helpful to these individuals and, uh, and obviously not be harmful. I think that's kind of the, mm-hmm. the takeaway that I had. Yeah, I, I totally love it. And I, I love that she came back to, you know, ultimately, yes. I mean, we got to know the exercise. You got to know what's going on under the hood, so to speak. But right. she was there out of, you know, taking someone from hopelessness to happy. And right. so big. I mean, simple as you could possibly be, but such a big mission on her part. Okay. Yeah. And then... This one, I mean, the cost of the the very reasonable cost, I want to say, of attending the whole weekend was made worth it by Dr. Joel Furman being (laughs) present. Um, I have so many things I could say, but I got to say my one single quote, I've got more than one, but his quote of exercise is the only way to speed metabolism without accelerating aging. If you're listening right now, I don't care if you're driving, pull over and write that down. <laughs> yeah. Exercise yeah. is the only way to speed metabolism without accelerating aging. You have to give credit to Dr. Joel Furman, but put that everywhere where you have 40, 50, 60 or older somethings in your business. I loved that. Well, I think, and to add what he what he didn't say there that he did say was uh, that things like eating <laughs> are age you. I mean, it, that's I'm simplifying what he said, but essentially, if you raise your metabolism due to sitting down to a big plate of food with a lot of calories, especially. Uh, calories that are not high in micronutrients, um, you're actually aging yourself. And I thought that was an interesting, he certainly, uh, most people have seen him on some sort of television show or heard him on the radio. He's been on like uh, Cassie, sorry, not Regis Cassie, boy, that's a long time ago. Who is it? (laughs) Kelly and Michael. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. PBS PBS and... um, and so, you know, and he's very passionate about what he does, very passionate speaker. And um, so, you know, you'll hear things in that talk, and I believe he's speaking also in Chicago, that uh, you'll, you'll kind of like wonder, I have to go look deeper into that. And I, that's what I love about these conferences is um, they're really inspiring for you as a trainer to want and go find out more because you'll hear things that are sort of contrary to what you have, uh, you know, heard in the past. For example, you know, Dr. Furman's mentioned uh, that idea of multiple, just kind of like mini snacks throughout the day, just constantly eating rather than waiting until you're hungry. Like yep. he's not a fan of that. So no. uh, I like his quote that uh, <laughs> it says the, the whiter the bread the sooner you're dead. I like his quote. Yeah. There, but, you know, Easy to remember. Great, <laughs> his focus is so good on the micronutrients, you know, to have a so micronutrient good. rich. Uh, and if that means having a pocket full of black beans, as he said, you know, that's what you're going to do. I don't know how you yeah. manage that, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very, very okay. A, a couple more speakers and then I want yeah. to, I'm going to kind of accelerate through this so we can hit on this last one in the few minutes that we have. Uh, Dr. Tanya Butler, and you're going to hear a theme here if you're listening, spoke on functional biomechanics in special populations and I love the passion she brought. A friend of mine, Dr. Evan Osar, talked about the approach to spinal and hip osteoarthritis. Love a quote that he gave said, you know, again, it was every single medication has side effects. I mean, it really hit home on how exercise is medicine all the way through the weekend. And then Dr. Kevin Steele, who many of you will wonder, why do I know that name? He is president of PTA Global and PT on the net. That's probably why. But I really want to talk about the last speaker I was able to hear. Um, And I missed a couple because I had to leave her for a plane. But we talked DNA testing with Dr. Jessica Nurek. And 
I am so excited. Actually, you don't know it, but in real time, I'm actually talking to her later this afternoon again to follow up. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the wave of the future. I love this. So talk a little bit about, you know, getting her involved in MedFit and um, what you're excited about. Yeah. Well, uh, again, uh, mo- like most everything, uh, these ideas, these areas originate with Lisa Doherty. You know, she's the one that uh, either seeks these folks out or they seek her out. And um, Jessica Nurek, Dr. Nurek, uh, works for a company called Toolbox Genomics, and um, they do DNA testing. And uh, but their areas of focus are in health and fitness and uh, in some certain certain circumstances even performance so you know we've developed a relationship with them and we're going to explore that uh, in a lot more detail than just having her speak uh, on webinars which we have not to date your uh, our conversation here but she's going to do a webinar for us and uh, she just uh, did a speaking session on the tour but yeah I remember telling her that I just think for for our audience this is going to be an extremely compelling presentation yeah. um, you know just to find out that you could do some testing of your DNA and you could find out uh, characteristics about yourself that you could actually as a trainer um, program uh, for so, I, in fact, I just did one for um, a friend slash a client in a studio that I work out of. Not a trainer any longer, but uh, you know, I kind of use this as an office space of a friend. And so we ran, we got his test done, and <clears throat> a whole bunch of information came back that was relevant to uh, behavioral patterns, to also how his body is going to deal with different uh, micronutrients to his exercise uh, predispositions. And, you know, what was really great about it is just that DNA testing, great, you're going to get a lot of information, but the expression of those genes uh, is really dependent on a lot of factors. So I like the carefulness in which she came to the uh, table or the presentation with saying, this is going to be really, really helpful but you need education behind this. And so she's going to help us uh, build a a multi-hour educational workshop for fitness professionals and others that might use this to include like RD, uh, sorry, RDs, nutritionists, massage therapists, anyone. And um, yeah, that was just really exciting. And not to mention she too is very it, um, enjoyable to watch as a presenter. I got really excited about that. And we had a ton of questions in her session. And she so also much. will be presenting yeah. in Chicago, I believe. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's going to be really well received. So for for everybody who's looking at or going through currently the Flipping 50 Specialist, I mean, this is key. So and we can do so much. And then there are those those clients for whom we can't figure it all out. And this will help you solve, you know, those last puzzle pieces. So super exciting. Last, I want to just give credit to Danielle Spangler, who was there talking pre and postnatal fitness specialist and Dr. Christian Thompson, who was Mm -hmm. the local right there from the department of kinesiology, right at San Francisco. But um, Tony, What's the best place for somebody really to, okay, you know, I'm hooked. You teased me. These were the appetizers. How can I find out how to register for a MedFit tour potentially or find out more about the network? Yeah. Well, the first thing I would suggest is to go check out the MedFit network or the Medical Fitness Network. And, um, because from there, you will actually get access to all these other things we've been talking about. But because you're a member of that network, um, many of these things will come to you either as part of your membership or at the very least, you're going to come in with like, you know, you'll get some discounts, if you will, or preferred pricing. So I definitely would have everyone go check out um, medfitnetwork.org. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, it's an annual membership, but it's so worth it. I mean, if you just think that you have access to close to 50 different educational webinars alone, uh, that would cover whatever the membership fees are there. But in addition to that, you're going to get 
uh, preferred pricing on the medical fitness tour. And you can go uh, find out more about the MedFit tour uh, by going right there, medfittour.org. And um, we have a bunch of, yeah, we have a bunch of different websites. Uh, MedFitEd.org is the uh, website for the Medical Fitness Education Foundation, which kind of gives you an overview. But in terms of getting to the tour, you definitely want to go to Med, uh, MedFit Tour, MedicalFitnessTour.org, and it'll give you a rundown of the things that we've done in the past and what we're doing in the future. That's where you would register um, and so forth. For the other projects you mentioned, like uh, our Medical Fitness TV channel, as well as uh, we're going to have a Medical Fitness Classroom uh, channel, uh, those are both up. But... Um, all of these things you can get to from just simply visiting the Medical Fitness Education Foundation website. The TV channel, the classroom channel, these are going to be great. Um, at the TV channel, you will find uh, groupings of different uh, conditions, chronic diseases or different medical conditions. And some of this is open to the community. Some of it is uh, more by subscription. But when you get into that area, you're going to be able to see uh, either webinars or you'll have uh, videos. For example, you mentioned Dr. Thompson, who did host uh, the conference for us at his university, University of San Francisco. I want to mention that. He was he and his students were a great host. But, um, you know, he'll have videos, say, on on assessments for older adults to see um, where a trainer might be able to help in terms of programming and preventing falls. So for that kind of stuff would be on a channel on this MedFit TV website. And, uh, and then the MedFit classroom is just going to grow in terms of uh, offering different education uh, that we're creating right now. We've got, if you don't mind me uh, going a little long, we've got, we've been working with different certifying organizations such as PTA Global, who you mentioned uh, Dr. Steele is president of, they built in conjunction with a lot of authors, many of whom who spoke on the tour, uh, a number of different four-hour courses that are online courses that can be found on PT on the net. And that's the kind of uh, things that Lisa is just so capable of doing is brokering relationships between authors and education organizations um, to create education for the allied health professional, the fitness professional. So, yeah, I mentioned all the medical fitness ones, but we've got a lot of education partners out there that are helping um, to build coursework for us as well. So, um, you know, all that information can be found on our website. And certainly they can contact me uh, if you want to give them my information at some point, wherever that is in, in this medium, I'm happy to uh, provide that. Fantastic. Tony, thanks so much for your time and for what you're doing. Oh, my pleasure, and thank you. And if you're listening out there, Fitness Pros, and if you have a question that we missed, leave it below the show link at flipping or at fitnessmarketingmastery.com. Forgot which podcast I was on. That is a job hazard. So go <laughs> to fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash podcast. And if this has been valuable, first of all, go to medfitnetwork.org and check it out. Second of all, we'd appreciate it if you leave us a rating in iTunes because it helps us get quality information out to more fitness professionals so they too can grow their careers. Check out the blog, other podcast episodes at fitnessmarketingmastery.com and go make a difference.